Character development is one of the greatest challenges for writers um, of fiction and really of nonfiction too, because character development is absolutely paramount in memoir, for example. People don't like to think of the people appearing in their memoir as characters, but indeed, that's exactly what they are. So one of the first rules, I think, is to s the rule of authenticity. I mean, we're in the middle of a political campaign right now, and you can tell when you're drawn to someone's speech, motives, actions, because they seem congruent with their character, and you can tell when they're not being congruent too, and they're actually just trying to tell you what they think you want to hear. And the same is really true of character development. As we come to know a character, as we're moving through the pages, you will know if the character has done something simply because the writer needs to further the plot. Or you will know when a 16-year-old starts speaking in a manner that sounds a little bit more like Mitt Romney and a little less like, like a 16-year-old girl in high school. Uh, so authenticity is key. And one way to achieve authenticity is to really know your characters well. Not all of that is going to appear in a book. Lots of people sketch them out and have every plot point, every detail of their characters written down for them. It's important to say that that doesn't all go into the book. It doesn't all appear on the page because we don't need to know how they would vote, what they eat for breakfast. Not all of those details will be important, but for the writer, it's critical that they know how would they act in this moment? What would they say in this moment? Um, but there are two, I like to boil it down to two points and I call them um, Darth Vader and the sheepdog and they don't appear in the same story. But the, the point around Darth Vader is this, that authentic people in our lives and authentic characters are not uniformly bad and they're not uniformly good. And this happens in memoir and in fiction where you have a main character or a nemesis or someone who is so evil that they're one dimensional and there's nothing really very interesting about that. And I like to remind people that Darth Vader in the end, this is one of our great icons, right, of evil. In, in popular culture. Even in the end, Darth Vader sacrificed himself for his son. That made Darth Vader infinitely more interesting than if he was just an evil overlord trying to crush galaxies. Um, all of Kittredge is another great example. Uh, for those who have read that book, she's maddening. She's hateful. She is this woman that, you know, by sort of page 30, you really want to despise her. And right then is when we see her vulnerability. Right then is when she makes a joke and you realize she's funny and she's tender and she's tough and she's still hateful, but it adds so much more dimension and depth. So the rule of Darth Vader. And then we come to the sheepdog. One thing is that readers are like working dogs. And if you don't give them work to do, they become destructive. So if you are doing the work for the reader on the pages, the reader is going to get bored or they're going to get angry. And one common way that people try to develop character is I'm going to give you a great piece of dialogue and we're going to see what the character said and I'm going to get a hint of what, what I'm supposed to take away from this. And right after you do that, you're going to tell me exactly what the character was thinking when they said that. They're, you're going to show me every movement that they had in reaction to another piece of dialogue. You've done my work for me. There's nothing for me to, in, there's nothing for me to infer. There's nothing subtle or nuanced about that. You're just really making sure I got the message. And not only is it not necessary, it's not elegant writing. Thank you for listening. Please review our other available content for help writing, publishing, and marketing your book. If you have any questions about the Author Learning Center, please contact us by email at authorsupport at authorlearningcenter.com.